Ooh. Okay. Um. Let me relax. Okay. This must just give me some time. And I still need to relax. Okay. So. Oh. Let's with um some podcast quotes. This is uh, the way we usually do it. Um, make sure you hit the subscribe button or smash the like button. Check the description for the sponsors of this podcast, of this show. Let's check the description, the, the description there. If you are interested in any of the courses, just comment. You hear the word? Say comment. comment. So, um, for this show, we want to just give you um, some quotes. Okay, we have up to 10. Okay, we have also ten, and we have some drink, famous drink. Okay, as you can see, this one famous soft drink. Okay, we have it for you, and we're gonna open it in the show so you see how explosive this one. So, uh, make sure we are going to open it in the second part of the first segment, which will also stream live. So, if you are missing the show right now, make sure you hook up with us at uh, twelve thirty-five um, p.m. Um, so we are going to open it so you see how it looks. Here is the drink here at the you can see them here. Okay, so now our quotes, okay. The first we have is a person a person who doubts himself is like a man who enlists in the ranks of his enemy and bears arms against himself by Alexander Thomas. Two, team red. Every man carries with himself the world in which he must live. Um, four, Bob Harrison observed, having trouble learning from God, when God speaks, your mind will be the biggest enemy. Five, James Allen observed, you are the handicap you must face. You are the one who must choose your place. Vincent remarked, Do not build up obstacles in your own imagination. Remind yourself that God is with you and nothing can defeat him. 7. Your imagination dictates your openness to positive direction. By Ralph Waldo and where the way Mike Medoc. So now this is all we have right now. This is how we usually do it. If you are new, this is Gary Science. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, like this video, and we will keep giving you more. We give massive value. Okay, okay, say it. Okay, we give massive value. Okay, now we are going over to the main show. Right, now, this is famous drink as always. Famous soft drink. If you subscribe, you're going to taste it one day, okay? I'm going to give it to you one day, okay? So you drink it. You drink it. You drink it. So now make sure you hit the subscribe button, okay? And uh, we are going to open it. Obviously, it's going to be really, really explosive. You can see it from that uh, window there. If you are watching right now, we are going to open it in the next uh, part of this first segment. Okay, it's going to stream like 12.35 p.m. We are going to open it. You are going to see the explosive reaction. We want to open it for this um, first part, okay? Check the description for more information about the podcast and how... Uh, if you are a subscriber, kudos, man. That's really, really cool. So now, we are going to discuss for this first part. We said uh, the first topic here we're having is the actual process of thoughts becoming reality. So now, the actual process, again, of thoughts becoming reality. Actually, before you come in, I just want to ask you right now. Is there a difference between thoughts and reality? Let's start from there. Well, it depends because, again, reality are what we can see, what we can feel, what we can touch. While our thoughts are what is in our, our mind's interpretation of reality or like our mind's hope for reality. That is what our mind wants reality to be. So thoughts are sort of like 
they are they not come to pass while reality is what is happening at the moment our thoughts can be from probably about the past the present or the future so thoughts are different from the reality that we live in in a lot of ways because again our thoughts are collections of our experience with our past or our present realities that's really brilliant now from what you said, I just I got inspired in a particular way from what you said. You said um in a particular way. Now I want to ask you right now from the definition you gave right now, like without reality would there be thoughts? And without thoughts would there be reality? Without reality there will not be thoughts, and without thoughts there will be no reality. The reason because without reality Again, we are living in our in a reality. Without reality, our minds will not exist in the first place. And without thoughts, the reality would have not been made in the first place. So in a way, they are almost codependent on each other to to thrive or to exist. Okay, that's a brilliant. So now that's a really that's a great one. That's a good one. So now the next question I have for you right now is this right now. Now, what is the actual process of thoughts becoming reality? Is there a transfiguration that actually takes place? If there is no transfiguration, then is there a, if there is a transfiguration like that actually takes place between when your thoughts become real? Can your thoughts become reality? Let's start from there. Yes, it's possible for your thoughts to become reality. And the most important the thing or the transfiguration that makes thoughts reality is action. That is the action of actually putting all those, all those your thoughts to work or probably projecting your thoughts into the particular reality that you live in that is making, bringing your thoughts to life. So it's the action that is that turning point that actually changes everything. Without action, your thoughts will simply remain thoughts in your head. But it's action that changes it from thoughts to reality. Okay, that's what really the brilliant. So action changes the stuff, changes thoughts to um, reality. Okay, that's the actual process, and um, that's the actual process. That's the actual process. That's the actual process hmm. of thoughts becoming reality thoughts becoming real. If you have any questions right now, if you're watching, make sure you drop them in the comments. I can see them. Okay, so I ask um, our guests for today. So now you said um, action is the turning point. Action is what actually changes the thought to reality. Uh, that's what you said. And um, that's what you said. Okay, that's what you said. Okay, that's what you said. That's what you said. Okay, that's what you said. Okay, now um we are going over to another uh, part of the stuff right now you said um action is what changes the thoughts okay into reality okay now you agree with me that for science formulas okay for instance e equals mc square those formulas and more shaped the world okay now those formulas come from thoughts am i correct you are agreeing that they come from thoughts. Yes. Okay. Now, if those formulas are from thoughts, just imagine life without thoughts. Like, how would it be right now? So, can you tell us the importance of thoughts? Again, thoughts are our, our mind's breeding ground of creativity. So, basically, I'm looking at trying to understand what. The whole creativity means our mind is just simply combining various experiences and in trying to create newer things that is trying to create newer experiences that are intriguing or exciting in solving particular problems. So our thoughts are where new ideas or new experiments are shaped, and our thoughts are usually triggered by something that we see or probably something that we have seen. So our mind that takes all those past experiences, combines them and probably tries to interpret them in a new way. Our minds are always moving, always. We are always thinking. Our minds, our brains are always combining. It's just trying to make sense of our reality. So 
I think that is where thoughts come from. Thoughts, our thoughts are shaped by reality in a lot of ways. The reality that you find yourself in will shape the thoughts that you have. So, like I think our minds are trying to make, like, based on the experiences that it has seen or probably that, based on what it has felt, our minds are constantly thinking of how to make sense of our reality. So, our so reality shapes our thoughts. Then again, if our minds, if we can actually put all those thoughts into action, then our thoughts can now shape our reality in return. Okay, that's a brilliant one. So that's a brilliant one. Uh, that's a brilliant one. That's a brilliant one. So now, um, uh, Patrick told me what makes us more godlike than any other thing, any other beast of the field, is our thoughts, because what in fact from the Bible from let's take from the Bible the Bible says at like, the beginning God created the heavens and the earth right now it's, 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 there's a lady that explained this thing I want to explain it here the way she explained it she said that before words comes out there must be thoughts right thoughts leads to feelings feelings leads to action action is the result now there must be there must be thoughts right she said before God said let there be light there must have been thoughts of the light right let's assume that way it must have been thoughts of the light let there be light and boom the light came let there be um water boom it came let there be this and that boom everything appeared on this earth that's the bible's description of what how what is happening and uh in our real life what how i started that's the bible's um, description of it of the whole process so now um that's what the bible said right and from the Bible viewpoint, what makes us identical to God is the ability for us to actually create things, right? Like that creative power is actually in us. We can create things. And for you to actually create things, you must actually think. Okay? Create, um, you, you must actually think. Uh, the, um, the action of um, creating things has to do with you bringing pieces of things together, right? Now, even in your thoughts, for you to actually create something in your mind, you have to bring pieces together mentally. You have to bring pieces together mentally. So to me, what actually makes us resemble God, we will define what God, okay, in this first show. You are going to give us um, a new definition of God, okay? I'm going to the science of being great by Wallace the Waters. It says, God is an unadulterated form of energy that in its original state will uh, permeate, penetrate all time and space. So now, that is also a fantastic definition for God. And But to many Christians, we see God like, God is kind of another, a higher human being, a bigger human being. Okay, according to Sadhguru, he says something, he said like, um, to a buffalo, if you were to ask buffalo, who is God? A buffalo would think, God is a bigger buffalo, right? <laughs> if you had to ask the flower, the sunflower, who is God? He's going to think it is a bigger flower, right? So he said, he said that our definition of God as a bigger human being might be wrong. He said that, is, that might be childish. Then he gave a new description of God. He said, when you, everything you see was made, everything, the house you're living in right now was built with ants, right? Was built with ants. Right, right. Before you existed, your parents existed before you, right? They knew about life before you came in and started to. Sh they knew about life. Even your parents, before they came, your grandparents knew about life, right? If we should trace this back, 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 back to the first, probably the first human, that like this is going to really knock your head. <laughs> We're going to trace this. This is really knock your head now. So what makes us identical to God, to me, is actually the ability, the ability for us to create things. It's what makes us identical, not just to create things, to create things in our head, in a world that we don't see. We call it mental world. And we actually, our ability to actually make it real is actually something that intrigues me all the time. So now, now, the question I want to ask you right now is this. We will give the definition of God. Okay, we'll define God. You will give us a new definition of who God is. In your own terms, what do you think God might be? Is God a bigger human being? Do you think God is a bigger human being? 
But then it makes us okay. I always say this. Let's not get trapped with this idea of argument from ignorance. For instance, in those days, in 1600 or 1612, when the thunder struck, I believe there was no education like that. When the thunder struck, I believe uh, they will give different explanations. You must can't just live without giving reason for things, right? So there is there's no called argument from ignorance. Like saying something about something that you know nothing about, okay, and you think that thing you said is true because you said it. So now back then, when it under stroke, I believe they will give different meaning for it. Probably our forefathers is coming. Okay, our forefathers are coming. This and that, or different um, discussion. And probably those discussions at that time usually make sense to them. Okay, Igno argument from ignorance ideas usually make sense. Usually make sense. Usually makes uh, people feel comfortable. So now, the idea of God being a bigger God or a bigger human being makes sense to us. Makes us feel comfortable. But that might not be the actual thing going on. The truth is this. This universe is is it's a deliberate creation. Like someone created it. But the thing we're trying to discover is right now is probably a better discussion about how this might have happened or who actually made it happen. Okay, now, so like I said, one thing that makes me feel, well, more godlike is our ability to create things, to create things from the mental world, to create things from, from our mind. Okay, I'm going to recommend a movie you should watch. Okay, it's called Encanto. Okay, Encanto. It's a Colombian movie. Like that movie, if you watch that movie, you'll get a new description of reality. Like what you 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 will be surprised. Like you will be surprised. How did they even come up with something like that? Cartoon. Like it is not cartoon. Let's not call it cartoon. <laughs> okay. So now what makes us more good? Like if you watch that movie, you will see that for that movie to exist. Like those people created the movie and like, like they really did a lot of work. Like it's something that they, they invented. If you actually if you watch that movie you come to, it's something that they invented in the song, the movies, like the whole thing, the whole storyline, everything. You will see, like, you will see intelligence in the whole thing. Okay, in the whole movie. That's it. So now what makes us to me, what makes us more good and seeing this intelligence of a thing? So right now, Patrick, if we were to define God in another terms, in another way right now. I would say God is an unadulterated form of energy in which in its original state, which is it can transform into different forms, in its original state will permeate, penetrate all time and space. If we accept this definition of God, there was a difference between God and our thoughts. What is the difference between God and our thoughts? Yeah. So for me, I think... I just like to describe God as an entity that is the universe. Like the Bible said in the beginning was the world and the world was with God and the world was God. So for me, I think God is like this all encompassing I don't want to say matter, but like <laughs> he just transcends space and time. He is space and time because again, time does not affect him. He is outside the realms of our own reality, for example. So for me, God is this sentient entity that transcends space and time, that is also space and time in a way. So basically, he is the entity because he created it, but he is not part of his creation. Like He exists outside the rules of the creation because he makes the rules and in a way, like he just transcends every single thing so that for me that's how i would define god is this entity that transcends space and time but the reality is from his own thoughts and again from his own actions like he spoke our reality now into existence i think that that is one thing that actually differentiates god from human beings his world our world don't have power God can speak anything like beginning there was nothing like there was absolutely nothing but Bible said in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth that he definitely he spoke them into existence so definitely he must have had like a like an idea or like what the world should be like or what the heavens and the earth should look like in his head before he decided to, before he decided to speak them into action and after then 
he spoke life into existence. Like he called up light from wherever light could be, light formed itself. So I think that that is what he also gave human beings again. That ability to create, to think, and then to create. Because again, so thoughts we we actually put our thoughts to work, they become reality. So I think that is what he actually gave to humanity when he said, "Let us make man in our own image." Because again, God might not necessarily look like human beings, like the way we are, like with hands and feet and all those things. Because again, he's a spirit. So I think what, by when he said man in our own image, I think probably he meant let us give man that ability to see, to think, to create, to be conscious of our, of our environment, to have thoughts, like to reason. So that was, I think that was what actually makes us, that is what actually makes us God-like. Okay. Reason. So now God created us in his own image, right? In his own image, in his own image and likeness. Like, to the average mind who actually sees what God said as image, image, right? If God said he created us in his own image, then it means like a reflection of God. That's who we are. To, that, to those uh, individuals, to, to the average mind like that, that what, can you, uh, do, what can you say to explain what that place means? When, again, the Bible was not being literal in that place, but, but when he said in his own image, like an image would be like a being, like an expression of your soul, for example. Because again, don't forget that God is a spirit, so definitely he is not a human being. So in his, when he meant in his own image, it means like, I don't know, some Bible says say in the likeness. So that means... We, we were made, our whole being was made to resemble God, not our physical form, that is our soul, we were made to resemble that of God, or to be like that of God and of the heavenly beings. Okay. That's, that's really good. That of God and of the heavenly beings. Another thing again, that of God and of the heavenly beings. I believe in God some different that right now, if you're watching right now. This is the first part. Let's go! Make sure you hit the like button. And uh, make sure you subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you're in the US, I will come there and I will beat you up. And I will slap you. I will slap you. Okay? <laughs> that was a joke. Okay, so now, um, Patrick, what really actually surprises me or try to intrigues me is this again. Now, when a child is born, we're, we're, we're going into um, the actual process of thoughts becoming reality. And for us to actually go deep into this, we we'll have to touch on these parts right now. Now, from... From um from when we were born, right in the womb, fertilization takes place, right? The sperm and the egg, right? It forms a hard mass, okay, of cells, which um I think that should be the zygote, right? Now that should be the zygote, right? Now, and um from that combination, the sperm cell and the egg cell, okay, a human is formed. That's little thing now, now shapes. Now moves, okay. Let's say let's call it energy. In that, uh, should I say transforms into ants, into head, into feet, and into body, flesh, this and that. What is the one thing there that you can uh, actually say? Um, what is the one thing that you can actually learn from there? It says like you can see massive intelligence in there, okay. The actual process of actually we becoming humans, there is intelligence. Okay, in that actual process, there's actually intelligence in us becoming human beings. There's intelligence. So now we're growing up right now, there's also um, still intelligence right now. So now, as we grow and grow and grow, um, the intelligence levels in humans don't actually die at all. Okay, don't actually die. Okay, don't actually die. And uh, that's something we go up and down. Okay, and uh, so... I'm really tired, okay? But let's go, let's keep going. So now, you have defined God to us, right? You have defined God as an entity, right? Okay? You have defined God as an entity. As an entity, okay? Okay. Okay, now, in the actual process of God, of thoughts becoming reality right now, we have discussed the actual process right now, so let's leave that aside and go over to something else right now. 
Now, Patrick, like, um, many people fear their thoughts, number one. They fear their thoughts, number one. And your mind is actually reading what is going on in reality. Without the reality, there won't be mind. Uh, without uh, thoughts, there won't be reality. That answers almost all my questions here. Okay, so now, but let's go back to the next one we have right now. If you are thinking a thought right now, like, how are we connected? Are we connected in this, um, in our thoughts? Like, humans right now, are humans connected, like, through our thoughts? Are we connected through our thoughts? I doubt that we are connected through our thinking is always, like, human beings, we are always independent in our thinking. Because again, we are not, in, we might experience a particular thing, a particular situation in different ways. And what we take away from that particular situation is all, always varies from human to human. Our viewpoints are always separate. So I doubt that our thoughts really connect us together. So, okay. According to him, he says, like, we are likely not really um, connected um, through our thoughts. And, um, and um and um but there are some science science right now that will tell you we can be connected we might be connected through our thoughts so we said it that and uh but that's not what we're talking about now we want to go into that one some um so part of science will tell you a hey, when you think a thought the other person may activate the brain cells of the other person and the other person may be feeling what you're thinking at that point okay the popular preacher the popular and uh, should I say motivational speaker who actually talked about this thing until he died was Bob Proctor. He will actually tell you that thoughts are energy, that is the most potent form of energy, that when you think a thought and you concentrate your energy, you can actually activate the brain cells of, of the other person there and the other person may catch what you are thinking. As what Bob Proctor taught, he taught this science like till he died. He was talking about this till, until he died. Was he talking about about this about this fact about this fact? That's why I asked the question: Like, are we connected in our thoughts? Like, if we think, if this person thinks a thought right now, is that person aware of what is that person thinking? Not always, but on rare circumstances, can the other person be aware of what is that person of what I am thinking about? Um, on rare circumstances, can you give trauma light on that? Could this be happening, or you actually think it is not happening? On rare circumstances, because there's no, there is no sense of probably even any, any evidence that something like that can happen, even on rare circumstances. Where I think the only time probably that somebody might think the same way, the person needs a like a hint from the. Let's say I am thinking something and you are by me. The only way you could probably start to get the same thoughts as me. It's probably if you get a hint or probably a, tr a similar trigger okay. that uh, that will trigger you to all that will trigger both of us to think the same thing. No, but no. I doubt that it could happen. Though, like we could think the same thing, but for me, there must exist this trigger and the circumstances surrounding both of us thinking the same thing must be similar. Okay, that's a brilliant one. Now another question I want to ask right now. And I'm thinking about this can right now, famous free drink. Now, is it the same picture I have in my mind that you have in your mind when you start thinking about this thing? No. Like I explained, uh, even though we see the same thing or we hear the same things, our brain interprets every information we get in very, very different ways. Like two people can look at can, like I said before, two people can have the same experience, but their takeaway from that particular experience will always be different because again, their mind is relying on previous information that it has or previous experience that it has to deal with the current situation. Okay. And they, there's no way you can say that two particular people have the same experience or have the same knowledge of the particular thing. So definitely Two different people are always going to see a particular situation differently. Wow, 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 <laughs> wow, that's that's that solved one of my problems. Okay, one major one I was having because I was thinking, uh, probably 
if I'm thinking about this car right now, yeah, I'm thinking probably the other person is actually having the same thing, and I'm thinking on rare circumstances I could be having same thoughts with the other person. But sometimes I usually doubt it. It's like I said to myself, we are unique, we are unique beings on this planet, and our experiences are actually unique to us, to each of us. That's what makes the way we view things are unique. Thing that happened that you view because the reason why we quarrel most times is because like um something happens and we put ourselves in the person's position and we view it so we view that thing we view how that person ought to react now now we come back to ourselves again and we see the person did not actually react the way he ought to react then probably we start to quarrel this and that so that's that's something you should stop doing if you're actually doing something like that i really do something like that that's something you should actually stop doing because like what you are saying right now um thoughts is actually something that is unique to us let me just hear from you our thoughts are our thoughts unique to us yes our thoughts again uniqueness just means like uniqueness is like how will i put it like it's another form of randomness that is when you say something is unique it means that this is not like any other so again, our thoughts are completely random because our experience has, there are so many variables shaping our experience based on things we hear, things we have heard, or things we have felt in the past, present. And there is no way, so you can tell me that two people every single day will experience and feel the exact same things. Even if they are in the same place, they are always in a different position in space. Like two people could be in the same room, but the possibility that they are standing in the same position, looking at the same thing and hearing the same things is always is always impossible. So again, people are always going to they are, our thoughts are always going to be unique about a particular thing. If you if you want to try it, give two people a particular like give people a solution to solve, but don't give them like a detailed instruction on how to do it. Just tell them to go ahead and solve it. Well, try to make the same like try to make the words they are trying to use, the equipment that they are trying to use similarly, you see that they will definitely approach the the uh, process of solving that particular thing differently. Because again, the way even down to down to the tiniest details, like how they will actually handle the equipment, how they will actually look at it, how this person will actually try to turn it on, how they will try to interact with everything mm. will always be completely different because again, they are trying to use previous knowledge to deal with what they are facing now. And again, their knowledges are always going to be varied. People have different ways with which they, they interact with other people or with which by which they see things. So again, for me, if you want, now want to begin to see things or to shape your experience, I think uh, this thing called structured thinking. So once you want to try to structure your thinking to make more sense, you, you will actually start to get better results. By structured thinking, I mean, then you need to start to, okay, saying, okay, looking at your, analyzing your thoughts on a, like, on a daily basis or frequently, like, okay, what am I trying to solve or how am I trying to solve it or where, what is the best way to solve this particular, like, I think we have actually touched on this particular topic in the previous podcast, but I think no matter how close or how particular, how, how I put it, no matter how similar a situation two different people go in or two different people experience their thoughts or their experience, their knowledge that they take away from that particular must always be different because they are not just, they are not just dealing out of like, they are not just dealing out of like when we come to a particular situation, we are not just starting afresh with our thinking again. Our thinking is shaped by our past too. So once two people come together in a particular place, their particular experience will always be different. Okay. Our thinking being shaped by our past, is that a limitation? No, it's not a limitation. I think it's actually our brain actually learning. It's not a limit. Again, you cannot learn what you don't know. If, but again, you can actually speed up your learning. For you to speed up your learning now, you now need to start to learn. It's like you need to start to push yourself to actually feel, get new experiences faster. 
Because if you just simply rely on the fact that, okay, uh, every day you will just simply, you must have a new experience. Like, you must not go far to actually get a new experience. From every day, like, you can just feel something. You Your learning will just be limited by the amount of experience that gets thrown away. But when you now start to go outside to actually get those experiences, you will learn a lot faster. Like, if you put a child that, okay, it's just what the child gets taught in school that the child knows. The child will never know more than that. But if the child now actually starts to go out to actually learn new things, the child will now actually start to learn more. So I think that is the same way our thoughts or our present is shaped by our past. If you just simply rely on the things that come at you, you will never go beyond that. So for you, you can actually speed up the process of learning by going out there and seeking to learn new things yourself. Okay, that's a brilliant one. That's a brilliant one. Okay, and um, that's that's really fantastic. Okay, and um, but, but Patrick, you said the randomness of our thought. Like this is really, really. What if Mr. A has believed all his life that probably he can, someone can read his mind, someone sees exactly the same picture as he sees in his mind. Now, if the person has believed, if Mr. A has believed this. Just a theory, okay, or self-made theory, which he, which he, which he, which he actually uh, brought up unconsciously to himself, or probably consciously. Like, if Mr. A has believed this thing for years now, and you're telling Mr. A it's not like that, <laughs> Mr. A is not going to believe like Even if he believes, he's not going to be free from that idea like that. He's not going to be free. So is there, a, is there an analogy? something that is visible probably everyone can reach that you can use to explain how likely it is for us not to be thinking the same thoughts and how likely it is for us not to be actually so people think like looking at your face right now so people think hey this guy is reading my mind this guy can read my mind he can say exactly what i'm saying so if i have a particular picture in my mind i think this guy is seeing it and i start to feel uncomfortable so that's so now is there a mental analogy to explain that that thing is likely not going to be happening is there a mental analogy? Is there something I will just talk so you just think? Is there something in, in, in the computer you can use to explain? Is there something in science you can use to explain? Is there something in even the Bible you can use to explain? Is there something around us? Is there something we play with every day? Is there words? Are there words? Anything that we can use to actually explain the fact that, like, what I'm thinking right now at this point in time is just for me. No other person is seeing what is going on. But well, people are so prone. I say people are so she say insecure to the extent they think like my as I, as I think a thought right now, this person can't see it. This person sees my insecurity. This person sees this and that. So now let's understand that right now. How likely is this not gonna happen? Like you said, it is not happening. So I need an she say a, an analogy to actually show that this is not happening. Are you said? in the room mm. but they are looking at the same object yeah. so again our thoughts are, are are the eyes of our minds so again if two people are looking at a particular object from different positions then that means they are definitely seeing different parts of that object even though they are looking at the same thing because again we can be let's say there is you know that most objects are three-dimensional or yeah. probably they 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 are two-dimensional in, in uh, shape and volume. So if you put that object on a particular table, for example, and you put two different people in that room to look at that same object, at every given point in time, they will always be looking at different parts of that object because, again, there are many sides to that object, and their mind will be, will be focusing on different elements at, of that part, or different parts of that thing at the time. I think there is this thing that... Jordan Peterson explained, he called it photogrammetry, where people experience like every particular object that we interact with in life, like people experience them in different ways. I think that is what happens again, because our minds now, let's say we are, we are looking at that object, but definitely, probably you might be seeing the front, I might be seeing the back. The only way we, I might not see the front and you might not see the back is if we change positions, then if we change positions again, we will still not be looking at the same thing at the same we might still be looking at the same object or be thinking about the same object, but our thoughts about that object at that time will always be different because we are seeing it through different lenses. 
Okay. Okay, two different lenses. So what I want to get right now is this, and I and I hope I'm speaking the mind of those of you right now.